cocaine, one of the world's primary party drugs. Cocaine is consumed by around 20 million people each year, mostly in Europe and North America. Hi. But what are the environmental impacts of this infamous white powder? Once the party's over, cocaine's journey continues into waterways. Scientists have found significant levels of cocaine and its derivatives in waterways around urban centres, music festivals, even college basketball games. It flows through sewage systems where it can only be partially treated and into waterways and coastal estuaries. But what does that mean for the environment? It's not entirely clear what the full effects of cocaine-laced pollution are, but evidence is growing that it could be having an impact. Endangered species, such as the European eel, can suffer from the cocaine blues. When they're exposed to environmental concentrations, it can impact their gills and skeletal structures. Other species could be affected too, with some fish known to show traits of addiction to other drugs, such as heroin. Coked up aquatic species are at the far end of cocaine supply line, which can be traced along drug trafficking routes, leading from destinations in the US, the UK, and the EU. Back through Mexico, Central America and the Caribbean. In countries such as Guatemala, Honduras and Nicaragua, we can see the long-term damage to forest suffered at the hands of a process known as narco deforestation. Narco trafficking has been linked to as much as 30% of past deforestation in these three countries. To get their coke to market, traffickers cut down trees to create airstrips. This land then becomes ripe for further exploitation. Some of it is converted to pasture or cattle ranches used to launder drug money and harbour traffickers. This process also has its own name, narco-degradation. It undermines governance, supplants indigenous peoples and impacts protected areas. In Guatemala's Maya Biosphere Reserve, researchers identified narco-degradation as a major driver of deforestation threatening endangered species, such as Latin America's iconic Jaguar. Drug money from coke infiltrates licit and illicit trades in both trafficking and producer countries, including cattle ranching, avocado farming, timber harvesting, fisheries and gold mining, all with their own potential environmental impacts. If we follow the supply chain further south, we reach Colombia, Peru and Bolivia, where coca is grown, the plant from which cocaine is made. There, production and efforts to suppress it exact a heavy toll on forests, waterways and people's health. Decades of law enforcement have pushed coca farmers and drug traffickers into remote and ecologically sensitive areas of South America. In Colombia, several national parks are home to illicit coca farms and cocaine labs. 143,000 hectares of coca were grown in 2020, including over 7,000 hectares in protected areas. This not only results in deforestation and the opening up of biologically sensitive areas to destruction, thousands of litres of chemicals and gasoline are used in cocaine production. Much of this is dumped, unchecked and unregulated, polluting soils and waterways, including the Amazon River. This plane is dumping herbicide over illegal coca plantations. For years in Colombia, Eradication efforts were driven by aerial spraying of the herbicide glyphosate with the backing of the US government. Over a 25-year period, it's estimated that more than 1.8 million hectares were sprayed across the country. These defoliation campaigns were ended in 2015 due to health and environmental concerns, with aerial spraying linked to skin and respiratory illnesses and harm to wildlife and ecosystems. But some want the spraying to return. Indigenous peoples and other marginalised groups are often at the forefront of drug-related land grabs and are the victims of conflict with drug traffickers in producer countries. Environmental activists and land rights defenders are often targeted, threatened or killed for protecting parks and indigenous and traditional communities from narco-traffickers. At the very beginning of this cocaine supply chain are the coca farmers. Those who grow this illicit crop and who often have little other means of income. 
their crop continues to feed cocaine demand the world over, leaving a trail of environmental harm from plantation to cutting board to waterways. Impacts we are only beginning to fully understand. <laughs>